In this video, I'm going to show you how to make that iconic future bass synth sound. We're going to be using Citrus and it's going to sound like this. What's up my producer friends, it's David with AnotherMonsterProductions.com. I'm back with another Citrus sound design tutorial. This is another requested sound. The concepts that we're going to be talking about in this tutorial really honestly translate to pretty much any synth that you want to use. Now if you're brand new to sound design, a while ago I did do a short series, it's just two videos, uh, and really the, the first video is the main one that you need to watch, but it's basically an introduction into synthesis and sound design. It's going to go over all the basic fundamental stuff. Uh, kind of like the sound design theory stuff that you need to know. So go check that out. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video. If you don't know, Citrus is a stock FL Studio plugin. It comes with all versions of FL Studio from the producer edition onward. So as long as you have at least the producer edition of FL Studio, you'll be able to follow along with everything in this tutorial. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so first things first, I did make some chords for this tutorial. Uh, so if you guys want to pause the video and just sort of copy the chords that I have here, it might help you follow along. But what I have is just a very simple future bass chord progression. It sounds like this. So let's go ahead and get back into Citrus. And the first thing that I want to do is just go up here to this button, click it. We'll go down to presets and we'll go to default. This is going to get us an initialized preset, which is just a sine wave. It's going to sound like this. So making this particular future bass sound uh, is actually probably one of the easiest sounds that you can make. It's basically just a saw wave with multiple voices on it. And then we can tweak it, potentially add effects and do various things to make it sound better and maybe a little bit unique. And so the first thing that I want to do is go to where you see the sine wave here. We're going to right click it and we're going to go to saw. Now this is a saw wave. It's gonna sound like this. So I mean, we're already kind of getting that future bassy vibe. The next thing that I wanna do is turn this into a super saw. So I'm gonna go into my main tab. I'm gonna go over here to where it says ORD. This is the number of voices. So I'm gonna bring this all the way up to nine. And then we're gonna to have to mess with some of these settings to get it sounding a little bit better. Let's bring the unison volume up just a little bit, maybe to like 80%. Uh, unison pitch, we can go ahead and bring this up to about 60. And this particular knob here is actually going to be a pretty deciding factor uh, as far as your particular future bass sound that you're going for. Um, so this may be something you wanna maybe come back to and experiment with. SB, this is sub-level. Uh, we're going to leave that where it is. And then this is the unison phase. So part of the reason why we're getting this like hit is because on Citrus, the default is set so low. And this is one thing that's kind of a big difference between like Serum and Citrus is that Serum, the default is like, I think a hundred already, which makes it kind of easier when you're making a super saw. It's like you just drag one knob and then boom, you got a really nice super saw. But anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, we now have our unison phase all the way up to 100%. And now we have this more full sound. And then let's go ahead and bring the unison envelope variation up to 100% as well. All right, cool. So now we have pretty nice sounding full synth. Now the next thing that I wanna do is go over to our matrix section. I'm gonna bring this down to zero. I'm gonna bring this out and I'm gonna bring this up. So now we have essentially our operator one, which is what we've been sort of tweaking. That's our saw wave here. It's going on the matrix here on the filter, and then it's going out there. So now we can go into our filter one tab and I can just bring the cutoff up. Uh, so now it's basically, we have our super saw again, uh, but we have the flexibility of messing with the cutoff and potentially we have a filter that we can play with if we want. So at this stage, it might be worth experimenting with some of the effects that Citrus has. Uh, they don't have much. They basically just have reverb, delay, and chorus. Um, but by default, it has a chorus set. And just adding maybe a little bit, maybe like 30% or so, can change the sound of it a little bit, maybe make it sound a little bit better, depending on what you're going for. So 
So you may want to experiment with that. You could experiment with adding some reverb on it if you wanted to. I don't really want to for this particular sound that I'm going for, but I'll add it on so you can hear it. You know, I actually kind of like that. Um, it's really subtle because I only have the effects going up to 30%. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that as is actually. Let's go back into our main tab and you may notice this modulation section. Uh, I had another Citrus tutorial a little while ago that I did where I was making a trance lead and uh, that was a pretty in-depth sound design tutorial. So you can check that out if you're interested in that. But if you saw that tutorial, you already know uh, about the modulation section here and kind of how it works. But essentially what I want to do is link the X parameter to the volume. And that's going to enable us to just automate this X and get that future bass uh, swell effect, which can be achieved a lot of different ways. But you could think of this as kind of like an LFO. We can draw out our shapes and get it to do different things. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and go back into operator one and I'm going to go to my mod X and then I can just bring this down. And that means that if we go back into our main tab, uh, if I go all the way down like this, it's going to be at zero. And then if I go all the way up like this, it's going to be at 100%. And this is linked to the volume. So. Now, sometimes you may want to link this to a filter or some other parameter. For this particular sound that I'm going for, it's usually an LFO linked to the volume. And that's going to create that future bass sound. Let me go ahead and show you what you can do here. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and create an automation clip. And now you have flexibility to draw this stuff out if you wanted to. You can make your own custom shapes and get creative with it, do whatever. But this isn't the only way to do this. And depending on what you're kind of going for, you may wanna achieve this a different way. But it's nice to at least have that option built into this preset in case you want to use that feature. Now, another thing that you could potentially do is add another operator on here. And if we're going to do this again, we want to make sure that this is linked. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I can change this to a saw wave and slowly bring the volume up here. And then what I would do to just make this sound different is bring this down maybe an octave or something. Or maybe we want to bring it up an octave. I don't know, these chords that I've created are already pretty rich and full. And to me, that sounds like it's too much, but it's something that's there that you could potentially mess with if you wanted to. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are a bunch of different ways to get that sort of LFO swell effect. Another way that we could do this is if we go ahead and route this to a free mixer track, I could add a fruity balance on here and I could just automate the volume or I could add a fruity peak controller and I can link the volume of this to the controller. So I'm gonna go to uh, peak plus LFO, and then I'm gonna invert this except, and I'll bring the bass up, bring the volume down. Now you can see the volume going. Uh, I guess we could do this the opposite way too, uh, whatever you wanna do. And then we can just adjust the speed and that changes the speed of the LFO. Anyway, that's pretty cool. So just a few options to play with there. You may wanna experiment with this and try some different wave shapes as well. Citrus makes it pretty easy. Here, let's go ahead and mute this stuff. Another thing you may want to do is go back in here and as I mentioned before we could experiment with the unison pitch. So up to you what sound that you like there. 
Quick announcement before I wrap up the video. I've been working on revamping, redoing my website and it's finally live. I'm gonna be doing an update video at some point soon where I go into a little bit more detail about it, but I just wanted to mention it really quickly. So far I have two products for sale on the website. One is a retro preset pack for Serum and another one is a Melody Loop Kit for Trap and R&B. So if you guys wanna check that out, be sure to head over to anothermonsterproductions.com. There'll be a link in the description of this video if you guys want to check it out. I'm gonna be releasing more kits as soon as I can. Uh, so if there's not something that interests you at the moment, I'm sure there will be in the future. Obviously all that will help support the channel. If you like the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I do a lot of FL Studio production tutorials and production tutorials in general, and specifically some sound design tutorials within FL Studio as well. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video.